So today we have Makatron, even though I don't think he's related to Greg the Leg, but they, I think their names even spelled differently. But hey, don't put my name out there. I'm SEC guy. Hey, don't put my name out there. I'm SEC guy. I don't need all the hippies. It's like, that's hilarious. Lance Zerlino has come out with his first mock draft of the season. And without further ado, we have to go ahead and dive into it, see what he's got going on here. As you read the title, there's a couple of trades in this one too, which makes it even more enticing, more interesting to see Bucks Steelers find their successors to Tom Brady and Ben Roethlisberger. Let's go on to the first pick here. We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. We, we kind of know with these first two picks where they're going to be going. The Jacksonville Jaguars are going to be going with Big Evan Neal, the offensive lineman out of Alabama. Alabama. Still have some help there for Trevor Lawrence. A new coach coming in, Doug Peterson, going to definitely be prioritizing that, making sure that we develop Trevor Lawrence and this offense. I like the pick. I have no problem with it. It's a tough one between some of these offensive linemen. It just depends on what you're looking for, man. Evan Neal is probably the most well-rounded tackle of the group, whereas Akema Kwamu, he's this big, nasty man, and he's got so much upside, just not technically there, whereas Charles Cross is more of the technical guy. So you just have your pickings and choosing of what you want. Evan Neal may be the most solidified day one starter. And then the Detroit Lions going Aiden Hutchinson. They need some help on that defensive line. Trey Flowers probably on the likely way out. Well, look, if you sign or if you draft Aiden Hutchinson, then definitely he's on the likely way out. And then the post June 1st or whatever cuts you can save nine plus million dollars. Aiden Hutchinson on that defensive line of Parawong. With the Aquara brothers wouldn't be a too bad of an option, even though I love Malik Willis and I know Lions fans. No, don't go at quarterback. But look, man, you take a chance. It is what it is. That's a different conversation for a different day. Aiden Hutchinson, really good pick for the Detroit Lions there too. Now, onto the Giants, which, wait, onto the Giants? Wait, this must be a trade, right? So the Giants are trading a projected trade with the Houston Texans. They are coming up for a Kem Akwamu. They figure on, they don't want the Jets to go ahead and steal him. So they go after a Kem Akwamu in a trade. The Giants move up to deal with the Texans to ensure a Kem Akwamu. He doesn't give, I don't think, any sort of details. Okay, yeah, I don't want to go too far there. But uh, he gets, they get a Kem Akwamu in a deal with the Texans. I wouldn't imagine it would cost too much. Probably like a third rounder and maybe some other change that go along with it. Nonetheless, we were just talking about Akema Kwamu and what he brings. He's not technically there yet. He misses sometimes with his punches. He's very raw as a pass protector, but if you can train him and coach him up, Brian Dable and this new coaching staff are going to be able to come in here and really help out this guy, man. He's got so much brim and upside, and he's going to give you that oomph on that offensive line. If you're looking for a potential Trent Williams sort of guy down the line future, Akema Kwamu could be that man. Moving right along here, let's see who the Jets are going to go with. They're going Going Kyle Hamilton, safety from Notre Dame. He's a heck of a player. Now, would I like to go with Kyle Hamilton? Ah, look, he is so, so good. If you want to just get yourself a sure thing, this guy is going to be an absolute monster barring injuries and stuff like that. So he's good. I can't really complain about it too much. I still like the edge position. Or Derek Stingley's my favorite player in this draft. I think he is the best player in the draft. But Kyle Hamilton is right there. So I can't, I don't know. I can't hate this too much, even though it's just, there's still some of the back of my mind with the Jamal Adams. I know he's a different player. And He's more of a versatile guy. He's going to be able to play everywhere on your defense. But I don't know. It is what it is. This is the guy I really would love to see. Derek Stingley Jr. goes to the Houston Texans after a trade down to get Derek Stingley Jr. And you figure out maybe they were wanting to get Derek Stingley at number three overall anyway. They could have, you know, especially with Aiden Hutchinson off the board, maybe they don't feel so good about going over Kayvon Thibodeau. We talk about this. Thibodeau may not be a guaranteed top five prospect. So you go ahead and slide down here with the Houston Texans and they get Derek Stingley there at number five overall. And Nick Asario going to build that defense like the Stefan Gilmore sort of thing. I, I like that, man. Derek Stingley Jr. is going to be a stud, man. I'm telling people sleeping on him. It's all cool. On to the Carolina Panthers who are going Charles Cross, the offensive lineman. So I've said this too about the Carolina Panthers. Unless you are getting a clear, clear, wait, Charles Cross is a clear upgrade in my, man, look, I like Brady Christensen. I've liked what I've seen from him. I do want to give him a shot. I'd rather bring in a veteran at that left tackle position and go after that interior if nothing else. At six overall is a little bit high for Tyler Linnitbaum. No, it is in my opinion. I don't care what they say about center. He's that good. He's going to be a year in and year out pro bowler. Why not take a guy like that? So it is what it is. You either look at the quarterback position or Tyler Linnebaum in my opinion, but I love Charles Cross. He's a great player. On to the New York Giants who fall right into Kayvon Thibodeau here, which this would be an awesome pick. So you start out your new GM here with Joe, Brian Dable coming in here, this new group, and you now get Kayvon Thibodeau, and then also you bring in Akem Akwamu. That's a great draft to start out this whole new regime. Love it a lot. Thibodeau 
Thibodeau, even though you got some question mark to get him at seven overall, I feel a lot better about that. You're definitely going to hear things like the effort and, you know, the injuries and stuff like that with Thibodeau. But overall, the upside with him and what he can bring to your football team, if you can get him to that level, they've got two severely high upside guys with Thibodeau and Akema Kwamu. Now the Atlanta Falcons is doing a little bit of a shake up here. They're going Traylon Burks, the receiver from Arkansas. I mean, I don't mind it. If you want to pair along Pitts and Burks, I mean, that's a dope combination. I do think defense is a bigger need for this team. But at the same time, am I going to complain about drafting Traylon Burks? Heck no, man. Screw their defense. No, I'm joking. They need to improve their defense. They've been so, so bad. You really need some help on that edge. They would have loved Thibodeau to fall to them, which would have been awesome nonetheless. David Ajabo could even be a good option here for the Atlanta Falcons. Anyway, they take Traylon Burks to add some more weaponry with Calvin Ridley, maybe on the way out, just depending on how that situation works. But I don't hate that pick at all. Maybe not their biggest need, but hey, it's it gets the draft. Go on, take your best available player. On to the Detroit Lions, David Ojabo. We were just talking about David Ojabo, and he is now off the board to the Denver Broncos. May you say they got a quarterback in free agency, or they trade for a quarterback, which this trade would maybe include this first rounder, but that's a very speculatory sort of thing to say. Unless the Broncos grade this quarterback class differently than I expect, Ajabo would be very much likely the pick. But I mean, with that being said, I mean, who are they going to get quarterback? You're going to keep Teddy Bridgewater and kind of just roll it back? I don't think that would make a whole ton of sense either. You're going to have a plan in place. This is going to change throughout the process, of course. I like David Ajabo, though. I do think he's a top 10 level talent, at least in that category. He does have the upside for sure. Now the Jets are going with Sauce Gardner. So they take a corner. Sauce is long. He's competitive. He's a ball hawk with press man and cover three talent. And he's going to fit that scheme perfectly. And that's one thing I'll say about the Jets. Maybe you say Stingley is not going to be. I think Stingley could play in any scheme. I really do. I mean, Ramsey came in and played for the Jags. That was maybe the perfect scheme for him early on in his career, even though he was dominant at it. But I think either way, Stingley Gardner, you're getting one of those guys for the Jets would be awesome to come in to this defense and really help them out a ton. I think it's important that we still focus on building around Zach Wilson, getting maybe another receiver like a Drake London or a Garrett Wilson, who is still available on the board. Going defense is good. I want to make sure we take on one of those picks, but I also want to try to go offense at this 10th overall pick. I feel like it's a sweet spot. Finding one of those receivers would be really, I think, a good option. As much as I love sauce, I just want to go out and improve the offense a little bit too. We got to build around a quarterback, man. On to the Washington Commanders. Oh, they're going with the tickets. Kenny Pickett at number 11 overall. Uh, yeah, you know my opinion on this one. Look, I don't hate Kenny Pickett or nothing like that. I'm just a little bit lower. I think he should be going more towards the end of the first round into the second round conversation. Second round is where I feel good about Kenny Pickett because I do think he can be a decent quality starting quarterback. And if you're trying to get yourself like a Mac Jones sort of quarterback, you're saying that. I like Mac Jones a lot. Kenny Pickett to me, uh, I'd still take him a lot later. I'd take him in that second round range. So it is what, it, I'm not worried about the hands. Like, that's not why I choose. Like I, you've seen quarterbacks now, even Joe Burrow or Patrick Mahomes has smaller hands. You name it. I know Kenny Pickett's got smaller hands than that, but it is what it is, man. On, I'd go with some, you know, like I said, Sam Howell or whatever. Now on to the Minnesota Vikings. They're going Trent McDuffie. So they go corner here, improving that secondary, which is going to be a big priority, of course, this off season. That's really nothing else to say. I like Trent McDuffie a lot. Do I think he's worth the 12th overall pick? Man. I mean, I think you're getting a really good corner. I don't see him really busting out or nothing like that. So if you want somebody who's going to come in and be a really good player, he has upside too to be one of the better quarters, quarterbacks in the league. Dude is an athletic freak and he is good in coverage. His instincts are on point. Tackling, yes, it's going to be a question mark, but I ain't too worried about it, man. Now let's go on to the Cleveland Browns and they're going with the darling of the senior ball. Well put because Jermaine Johnson was an absolute monster. I still would go with George Karloftis over Jermaine Johnson. I'm a little bit lower on Jermaine and every time I watch him at Florida State, there's just something in the back of my mind that says, you know, while yes, he's a good pass rusher and he can get after the quarterback, I just didn't see it consistently enough. I know he showed off some of that power element that I was looking for at the Senior Bowl, bullying over some guys like Darian Kennard. But at the end of the day, I think Jermaine Johnson is still towards the back end of the first round for me personally. I get it though. He was an absolute monster and he didn't even, he's like, I'm done. I don't even need to show up anymore. I'll fake an injury. I'm getting out of here because that's all I need to do. So it is what it is Jermaine Johnson going to 13 overall to Cleveland Browns. They just take an edge rusher here. I would still take a receiver though over Jermaine Johnson. Like someone like Drake London or Garrett Wilson, I would take over Jermaine Johnson, no problem. On to the Baltimore Ravens. They're going Trevon Walker. Super athletic superior upside with Trevon Walker. This guy could be one of the best defensive linemen in the NFL in a couple of seasons. Give him some time. He is a monster of a defender. And if there's anything the Ravens love, it's rugged defenders in the front seven. He's long. He's powerful as a run defender and he's okay as a pass rusher room for growth absolutely but they get some more defensive line help and the way they can utilize Trevon Walker inside and out is going to be definitely something
something that they could cover. And you could always use Tyrus Bowser too in unique ways. He's not maybe a full-time pass rusher for you. And you can put him in coverage a little bit here and there, but I like Bowser and Owe a lot as their edge group. Now on to the Philadelphia Eagles, they're going with the machine and Kenyon Green. And this one here is like, hey, if you want to just go after more offensive line, if you feel like he's that good of a prospect, go for it. You know, investing in the offensive line is never a problem. When in doubt, you go on the offensive line. I'm always cooling with it. So getting Kenyon Green, do I think it's their biggest need on the roster? No. How he's done a phenomenal job of investing in offensive line. I can't say it enough. So I got to give him credit. Continually investing in that offensive line. It's never a bad idea. Let's see where he's going with this second pick. Okay, Drake London. This one, I guess, was pretty simple to go out there. At the point with Drake London being available at 16 overall. I mean, heck yeah, man. Drake London and Devontae Smith, that's like a perfect combination of receiving core. So you got yourself some really good uh, posse. You know, you got yourself some really good receivers now. I mean, it's a lot improved with Dallas Goddard to at the tight end position. I like it a lot. Now to the Pittsburgh Steelers and let's go. Malik Willis, the quarterback out of Liberty. I love this pick, man. You know Mike Tomlin and Malik Willis hooking up and getting that put. This would be a perfect match in heaven. You could get themselves like a nice eHarmony commercial going or a match.com. I don't know how you want to be looking at it. And this is a trade too. That's right. I didn't even think about this, but this is the 17th overall pick with the Chargers who traded with them to come up to get Malik Willis. I absolutely love it. So they jumped in front of the Saints, right? They moved up in to get Malik Willis. I love Malik Willis. I like the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think it'd be a boom in combination. Can't say any more about this. If anybody's going to develop him, it's going to be Mike Tomlin and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now on to the New Orleans Saints who maybe miss out on Malik Willis, but they get Chris Alave, receiver out of Ohio State. And this is something that's really interesting. I will say that he has Chris Alave going above Garrett Wilson. Do I think that Garrett Wilson goes in front of Chris Alave in the draft? Absolutely. I would take Garrett Wilson over Chris Alave, but look, Chris Alave is so good. And I do think he is being a little underrated sometimes, including by myself. He is such a good receiver and what he can do. Obviously, he's one of the smoothest in the business. I don't think he's going to bust, right? Like, I'd be shocked if Chris Olave comes out here and is not a good receiver in the NFL. He's going to be a really good receiver. And if Michael Thomas can get back and get healthy, you pair him along with Chris Olave. That's going to be a great group. I just would take Garrett Wilson over him. It is what it is, man. On to the Philadelphia Eagles. They're going Brisker, Jaquan Brisker. <laughs> this is an interesting one. And I like Jaquan Brisker. I take him in the second round though I think he's more of that box but I wouldn't call him a box safety because I do think he can play deep he's absolutely athletic enough he's more of a too high sort of guy Adrian Amos comp if you want to put him at that I like Daxton Hill a lot I think Daxton Hill is worth a top 15 pick the more and more I watch Daxton Hill he's just unbelievable man he can play anywhere on that defense I would take Daxton Hill if it were me but Jaquan Brisker has got a great name and man Jaquan Brisker I do like him too so I don't want to discredit this but I would go with Daxton Hill over Jaquan Juan Brisker. That's just me. Let's see. What did they go with? So they went receiver and they went offensive line and then they went safety. I would go with one of those edge players though. Like Carl Loftus is still available at this point. I would take him. Yeah, I would do that personally. That's kind of where I'm at with it. But let's go ahead and move on here to 20th overall. Oh yeah, this was the trade here with the Chargers and the Steelers. So now they trade down to get Trevor Penning. Trevor Penning is a good player. I do think he is going to bring something to your offensive line and it would be a good combination to go him and Slater because Slater's like your super solid pass protect. I mean, great in the run game too, but you're going to add a Mahler in Trevor Penning. I do think he might want to start him off at the guard position early on in his career, but if they wanted to put him at that right guard position, if a Dayabushi or Michael Schofield aren't back, I'm assuming they'll bring one of those guys back. But if you wanted to put Penning at guard or they would be drafting this guy to play tackle at 20 overall, it is what it is. There's going to be some struggles with Penning. There's going to be some growing pain, but I do see the upside with him. And I do think he can be a really good player. You're going to have to develop him though. With a lot of these offensive linemen, you're going to have to develop them. That's Trevor Penning. Now let's see what, and you know, what I will say with this pick too, would I go somewhere else at this moment with some other plays like George Karloftis being available? I'd, I'd consider taking him, maybe even Jordan Davis at this moment. Well, there's some other options, cornerback, you could think of some good names too, but Trevor Penning, I get it, trying to find some more offense line help. Let's see the pitchers, they're going with Devin Lloyd. Devin Lloyd's a really, really good player. I mean, he's just really, really solid. I love the receiver and Garrett Wilson's still available. I'd probably take Garrett Wilson over Devin Lloyd. That's just me, but I do think Devin Lloyd what he can bring to this Patriots defense really help them out. They need some help at the linebacker spot really bad. So I do like Devin Lloyd. I think he's a really good player, but I'd take Garrett Wilson, help out Mac Jones a little bit more. Speaking of Garrett Wilson, here he is. Garrett Wilson is off the board to the Raiders and Josh McDaniels finding himself some serious playmaking ability in Garrett Wilson. They need some more receiving help to pair along with Hunter Renfro and Darren Waller. They get it with Garrett Wilson. They're really thin as well. And then let's see, the Cardinals are going to go with Go Kyler Gordon, corner out of Washington. I like Kyler Gordon and he's going to test out the waters, of course. He's an athletic specimen. You can see it there on the tape. I just think 
he's not there technically sound. He's going to have some time. He's going to take some time to develop as a corner in his technique and just seeing him in coverage. I don't think he's at that level as some of these other guys like Kyir Elam, who's a lot more sticky in coverage, or even you could Roger McCreary. I like him a little bit more than Kyler Gordon. You know, with the T-Rex arms, I'm not too worried about that. He might be a slot only player, but Kyler Gordon, he is a good player. I do think he's a lot of upside too. For Let's see who the Dallas Cowboys are going with. So they're going Bernhard Ryman, the offensive lineman from Central Michigan. This guy's one of my favorite offensive linemen. I just love the way he plays. I think he's got a lot of upside. Even though he's a little bit older of a prospect, he's a really good player. Now, with that being said, looking at it to the Dallas Cowboys, does this make a lot of sense? No. And look, you read that the Cowboys might have more pressing needs. I agree with that, especially at guard. Do you put Ry Ryman at guard? Eh. I think he's a tackle to be honest with you it's hard to find tackles with Ryman's potential and Tyron Smith isn't as dominant as he used to be are you kidding me Tyron Smith is still one of the best left tackles in the NFL if you're trying to replace Tyron Smith I think you need to find a good swing tackle with him yes the availability has been an issue but Tyron Smith is unbelievable if you're trying to compare him with Trent Williams Trent Williams is had one of the best seasons you're ever going to see from a left tackle. Tyron Smith, though, is right there as a top three tackle in the NFL still, in my opinion. Like, I watched this guy recently. He's still very, very good. He may not be on the dominant level that he once was, but he's still freaking good. And I'll take him. If the, if you don't want him, Jets, hey, Joe, call up the Cowboys. I'll make a trade for him. I'll give up a, you know, whatever pick for you, you know, to get Tyron Smith. He's a beast. I want to keep him around as long as possible. But you need to find a good third tackle onto this roster. I think they need ear interior offense line more than they need a tackle to pay a replacement and whatnot but hold on a second wait a minute Ty Tyler Lindenbaum is Tyler Lindenbaum still available oh, hold on uh, am I bugging right now am I grilled cheese and I, I gotta go back and check because I was just thinking into your offensive line and Tyler Lindenbaum he's still available oh my god you're joking me, bro. Oh, bro. The Eagles for passing on Linderbaum. The, even, I don't care. Any of these teams. The Steelers, even though I love Malik Willis, so we'll be cooling with that. Uh, who else passed up on Linderbaum? Even the Patriots. I love David Andrews. The Raiders shouldn't have passed on Tyler Linderbaum. The Cardinals shouldn't have passed on Tyler Linderbaum. The Cowboys passed on Tyler Linderbaum to get. I love Bernhard Ryman, but man, they need an interior help more. And Tyler Biadash, look, well, I don't think he's terrible or nothing, and I think he can continue to develop along. Tyler Linderbaum, he's going to be a year in and year out pro bowler in my opinion you're getting a guy who is one of the most surefire offensive linemen oh my gosh Linderbaum oh, you know what where is Linderbaum gonna go I'm gonna blame every team who does not take Linderbaum Buffalo you didn't take Tyler Linderbaum Tennessee you didn't take Tyler Linderbaum I love Zion Johnson I like Jordan Davis too I think he'd be a good fit to pair along with Ed Oliver so that's a good pick if Tyler Linderbaum was not on the board Tennessee Titans Zion Johnson even though I would say offensive line's a big need too for them I'm going I'm jumping all over the place now because Tyler Linderbaum screwing my mind I can't believe he's still available. Tennessee Titans, Zion Johnson, huge fan of him. He's got him listed as a center and guard. And this is another team I would be like, if I'm a Tennessee Titans fan right now, I'm throwing something. At, I'm, I'm literally getting pissed off because Ben Jones is a free agent. And I think they have a good chance to bring him back, but you never know. Okay, he's getting a little bit older. Tyler Lindenbaum would be a perfect fit. And especially if you're listing Zion Johnson as a center guard position, I think Zion is more of a guard. Put him, keep him at the guard position. If you're looking for a center, Tyler Lindenbaum would be a great option for this offensive line. He'd be a perfect perfect fit too for this team. Man, I'm bugging. Maybe I'm overreacting. I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe I am overreacting, but I think Tyler Linda um, should be gone by this point. I could see him dropping because of the center value, but a team like even the Pittsburgh Steelers or someone up there, Philadelphia Eagles, if they see Tyler Lindebaum available, I think he's just too good to pass up. You know what I'm saying? There's so many teams over in that ability that to be say, hey, are you going to pass up on this guy? So it just doesn't make a whole ton of sense to me, especially the Tennessee Titans. This was like a scenario where they need center with Ben Jones being a free agent, you would snag him, right? That would be an easy selection. Oh, and that's no discredit to Zion Johnson or some of these other guys that have gone off the board. George Carl Loftus is still available. I just uh, remember that. Carl Loftus is still available. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, though, going Matt Corral. I do like the fit for Matt Corral here. George Carl Loftus would be a great fit if they didn't go with a quarterback. And that's something we'll have to wait and see on free agency. But Matt Corral would be a perfect fit in Bruce Arians' offense. This is one I really do like in the way he would be going here and that potential that he could bring into that Tampa Bay Buccaneers team. And they could bring in a free agent in and whatnot and then he could start for a year let Matt Corral develop behind him Packers are going with Nicobe Dean and you know what hey draft Tyler Linenbaum move Myers over to guard you could always do something like that man he's got versatility to play at that guard position so even a team like the Packers I would be looking at Tyler Linenbaum let's see who else should be looking at Tyler oh my gosh and the Miami Dolphins I, I don't know if I can watch this mock draft anymore I, oh my gosh are you kidding me I love you Lance I really do like I'm a big fan of you but this one is like a baffling to me 
why Tyler Lindbaum's falling? Did he, do you know more about it? Like, is he having a gas mask or is he smoking weed every day? Smoke weed every day. I don't know, man. But I mean, look, Jameson Williams is a beast. And normally I would say for the Miami Dolphins to get him at 29 overall, this would be a great spot because if you had another weapon like Jameson Williams to pair along with Jalen Waddle, that would be unbelievable and really, really fun to see whether or not Tua could get him the ball or not because the offensive line and stuff like that. But hey, you can go in on free agency. I know they talk about that. But yeah, I love this if Tyler Linderbaum was not available. So it's just amazing to see how far he's fallen. Nonetheless, Kansas City Chiefs are going to go with George Karloftis, Ed Trisher out of Purdue. Boiler up. I love this pick. And him falling to 30 overall in the Kansas City Chiefs, this would be a really, really good situation. So this would be a slam dunk pick. Absolutely. I'd be running to the podium. George Karloftis coming to Kansas City. Super happy for George and what he can do to bring, he can bring to that defense line. Big time need. And finally, Tyler Lindebaum off the board. I thought he was going to fall out of the first round here. And hey, why did the Bengals take him? I mean, Tyler Lindebaum. Why would I take Tyler Lindebaum? I mean, come on, man. Anyway, Tyler Lindebaum. If the Kansas or the Cincinnati Bengals fell and got Tyler Lindebaum a 31 overall, this would be one of the best picks and values that I've ever seen in the draft so far. I don't need to say anymore. He's a beast. And Cincinnati Bengals need offensive line help to get him at 31 overall. Boom! Mine's exploded. On to 32. It's Quail Walker to finish out this draft class. Quail Walker. I would look, Daxton Hill is still available. I love Daxton Hill. Maybe I'm just a fanboy. Maybe I, I'm way higher on him than consensus. But I would take him over Quail Walker. Even though, again, Quail Walker, I think he can definitely be one of the better linebackers in this draft. I just like Daxton Hill a ton. There's some other guys, let's see, receiver wise, who's still available. There's probably somebody. George Pickens, they do need a receiver. Now they got another pick in the second round, but it is what it is. They give themselves some linebackers. I think it's a little early for Quail Walker, but I know I've seen Daniel Jeremiah put him there. A lot of these guys are very high on Quail Walker, and I understand. Every time I go back and watch him, this dude is an athletic specimen at 240 pounds. He's going to bring us some serious element to your linebacking situation. That is going to be it, though, here for this. And what am I going with? I'm going with the Rams. That's Lane Sirline and his first mock draft that he's come out with. Very interesting. My least favorite pick. And my favorite pick, let's see. My favorite pick was probably like Malik Willis. I love Malik Willis to the Steelers. That would be awesome. Awesome. Least favorite thing though happening was Tyler Lindebaum falling all the way to 31. That's unbelievable. My mind's shaking on that one. But anyway, let me know your favorite, your least favorite picks. And I hope you have a great day. And speaking of a great day, it's National Pizza Day and also National Chocolate Day. You can't get much better than that pizza and chocolate. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I hope everyone has a really good day. My name is Jesus I'm doing my thing and I hope you do too. And I'll talk to you later.